Pedal fans and uh, some other things I might be pedaling. Haha, <laughs> see what I'm doing there on you. What am I doing? I'm selling some things. Why am I selling them? Because I think they're crap? No. But if I didn't sell things, I'd be sitting on 2,000 pedals, which Josh, Josh from JHS is doing. But that's fine. He's got a business where he makes money. My business is the YouTube channel, which means selling some gear that I get from companies to review is part of the business model. I can't have shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves of shelves and shelves and shelves of pedals. I'd like to, but I also like to have pasta with tomatoes, for example. And at the store, they don't take pedals, they take cash. So I have to kind of first get cash for the pet. You, I hope you get this. It doesn't make sense to keep everything that I review. It really doesn't. Some things that I review, I can't even sell because they're too cheap, not worth anything in the process of testing them. They get broken, whatever, there's a problem with them. I, of course, charge for videos. That's one way to make money. I have affiliate links under videos. That's another way to make money. I have merch. That's not a way to make money because no one's buying my shirts. And at some point after it served its purpose here in the studio, selling gear, is a way to make money. So please no hate comments on this video of uh, why aren't you just donating this? I understand that some of you are morons. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say, but I know you see, oh, he's got all this gear, so he's got loads of money. First of all, if I bought all this gear, I wouldn't have money because I bought all this gear. Secondly, I'm not buying the gear. How much money I'm making, you have no idea. Because I get this gear to show to you. As long as I'm showing it, it's worth zero to me because I can't sell it. If I give a company a free video, why? No, it's not free, right? Because they're giving me the gear. But then the company is saying, or you guys are saying, you're getting free gear. I am allergic to this on a massive fucking level. How is it free if I'm providing a service? How is it free if I'm working for 12 hours to sit here every day to make videos? How is it free if I make a video where I spend two and a half hours on a slide shot with a red camera on a slider, edit it on an expensive computer with expensive uh, editing software and skills that I had to acquire, then do a fully produced song with it, which by itself would be thousands to buy, for a company as a promo video, then sit here for 20 minutes, sending it into different amps and all that stuff. That has a value. So you guys saying you get free gear or a company saying, well, you got the pedal for free. I get very angry about this because it's a service. Okay. It, it is just like the dentist provides a service. So Part of the job is once in, a, once in a while, once a year, I go through stuff saying, look, this, this will likely not show up in another video or it's been in a many videos or I have two of them or whatever. So let's move it on. And then before I put it on reverb and all that stuff, I offer it to you. So under the video is a PDF document with everything that I'm selling this year. And uh, some of these things have been here a while. Some of them have not. Some of them are brand new because I got several uh, of them. Please do not ask me, is this still available? Because there's a PDF document which I will update with what's available. So asking me what's available means you are not capable to go into a PDF document and look at things. So look at things, and that means that's available. It's very simple. It's not difficult. Don't ask me. Now I can't remember anymore what the email was that I gave in the other video. I think it was, I want this at HenningParty.com. I think that's what it was. If it wasn't, this is the correct email right here to write me if you want something. So let's go through some things that I have in front of me um, that you can buy for a fair price. Considering, never been on stage, never been on a board, um, unless it's been on a board here in a video, but it hasn't gigged. It hasn't traveled the world. It hasn't seen any wear and tear and beer on it. Some of the things are brand new in box. And most of the things have been in a video and then set on my pedal shelf in the other room. So you're really getting 
very, very well-maintained gear, if not spotless and brand new. Let's start with this thing. Antelope Audio Zentua Synergy Core. Clocks in at two grand and I'm taking off a whole bunch uh, because it's been sitting on my desk for a bit. I got this in trade for the video, so, so far I have not been paid by Antelope because I got this. That means I've been paid. You get the idea? Okay, it's not a free video, it's not free gear. That's, that's how that works. Um, this is a great, extremely flexible audio interface. Extremely. Um, it's got a breakout cable in the back to eight extra outputs. If you want that, I bought the breakout cable for, I don't know, I have to look it up. I have the breakout cable. If you want it with this, you can buy it. In addition to it, we'll find a deal. Um, it's very good to have the breakout cable because that gives you eight individual outputs on top of this. Um, it's got Thunderbolt and USB. It's got light pipe. It's got ADAT. It's got four inputs. It's got two reamp outs. If you understand the software, which is very difficult to understand, this is great. The company is iffy. People are reporting to me that they have the most amazing customer support, and then other people are reporting that the customer support is shit. People are saying, I'm super, super, super mega happy with my Orion, blah, 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 and other people are saying, I can't get it to work. So, um, I don't understand the company, and, and I, I gotta say, I'm not the biggest fan of how they were interacting with me. But if you're looking for a pro audio interface that gives you all the routing options that you could ever want, this is it. And I'm knocking a whole bunch of money off the top. Um, one of the best pedal board wireless systems, Sennheiser XS Wireless Digital. Great tuner. You put this on the board, you plug this in the guitar, you're good to go. It's absolutely phenomenal. This is definitely not your little Nux, which are decent. I shouldn't say this because I'm selling one. Uh, no, I mean, they're, they're okay. They, you know, the Harley Benton, the Nux, the X5, the, the little two pluggy things, they're all good. They're also not that expensive, but this is the real deal. And if you have a pedal board, I would go for this. I've got two of these to sell, brand new in box. Um, and let's go, yeah, staying with Sennheiser, I probably have seven or eight of these, different ones that plug into mics or plug into, uh, what's it called, um, instruments. This is the laugh set, the XS wireless digital portable laugh set. So the great thing about this is, first of all, I got two of them, brand new in box. Can go on top of your camera. Laugh my kit right here. This clips right onto you. Transmitter, receiver, and they charge with USB. No exchangeable batteries, so you have to have them charged. The, um, and this will plug into your camera. So if you're doing live streams and you want good audio, not with the camera audio or a shotgun mic, then this is the shit. Uh, you are going on location somewhere doing something. This is the shit. It's rather inexpensive for the quality that it provides. And it's wireless, got a good range, rather dependable. I wouldn't use it at a trade show. I use the higher quality AVX system at trade shows because there are many, many frequencies. But unless you're in a place where everyone's using wireless mics, this is the shit. And I've got two of them. So maybe one of you will just buy both of them for interviews. Whatever, I got two brand new in box, as you can see. If you've got a Boss or Roland guitar synth system, like the SY1000 or whatever, um, and you want to connect to your GK pickup, you need this cable. Now, why do I have this? Well, I have the SY1000, I did a massive video for it, I uh, sold the system, and uh, I had to have a cable. So Boss sent me one, but also, uh, I think I bought one at Toman before this arrived. So I've got a spare one and Boss said, well, just move it on, just sell it. So if you want this, if you have a SY system, this is the five meter one. Staying with Boss. RC-10R, looper with built-in drums. Compared to the RC-500 and the RC-5, these drums are more in-depth, better grooves. There's two tracks. Watch my video, it's pretty in-depth. But if you're looking for a loop station with two tracks and really cool drums, RC-10R can be used. Um, iRig 2, I think it's 25 bucks, dirt cheap. Plug it into your iPhone or Android. 
and off you go. Play Amplitude for practice on your iPhone. Um, that's the analog version. The better version, which I recommend, is the iRig HD2, because that does it in digital. And with the uh, analog version, there was always a little bit of a crosstalk between the two different channels going in and going out, and you could possibly, with high gain amps, have feedback. I don't know if they fixed that, but it definitely isn't a problem with the HD version. It's what I'm using if I'm doing that. I've got two of the little ones. Nux wireless system, it's the better one, it's the improved one. Uh, it's not a lot of money, You're cheaper than the Sennheiser. It, it's a more basic system. Do not use that when someone's flying a drone because it'll crap out without a drone, 80 meters. Pretty good, watch my video on it. So, um, this is a white box. This is the clockwork from J Rocket. This is a phenomenal, um, what's the thing called? Electroharmonics Memory Man. Uh, it's a memory man in a small enclosure, two uh, expression inputs. It's a very, very good real analog delay. Well, then why am I selling it? Well, because this represents quite a bit of value. It goes for 450 bucks in Euro. Now having an analog delay of this quality and this price sitting in my shelf over there, it doesn't make sense. If I quickly need an analog delay like it. I have the Starlight from UA right there plugged in. That's on my little board on the desk. It has a memory man in it. It's also very good and for my purposes, enough. So having this kind of value sitting around doesn't make sense. So you can get this uh, and I'm knocking money off. Eventide Tricera Chorus, great chorus from the H9 algorithm series. I recently just reviewed this. It's absolutely killer. I don't use chorus that much. I'd rather use univibe sounds. So uh, I'm keeping pedals from this series. I have the uh, Black Hole Reverb. Keeping this is absolutely phenomenal. And I'm definitely keeping and not selling ever uh, the Multi-Tap Delay, which is absolutely amazing. Ultra Tap, that's what it's called. Even that Ultra Tap, because I'm into delays. So uh, chorus, it's very good. But again, it's too high priced for it being just sitting around and sometimes me using that. Same goes for the micro pitch. That's that red pedal that does little pitch things that can drift with two different delays. Again, I like delays, but I have the ultra tap, which is more my thing. And that micro pitch, that's for the, you know, the Eddie Van Halen doubler sound and every Van Halen fiend friend aficionado will want this pedal. Uh, so, Makes a lot of sense for you to have the micro pitch if that's what you want. It's not my kind of effect. It's a very good effect, but I just don't have use for it. Now, if you're completely crazy, the Pedal Pawn Gypsy Vibe. Look at it, look at it in, in a nice pouch. This is tough to get. They're building them and you people are buying them like crazy. It is not inexpensive. Mine's cheaper than most of them on Reverb. And I love Univibe. I love it to death. But it presents a considerate value to be used for me twice a year when I need a Univibe. I'll, I'll find a different Univibe to use. It's just, it, this needs to go to someone who's dying to have one and not for someone who has it on the shelf for once in a while. I'm not the vintage dyed in the wool aficionado who needs something on this level. It's a great pedal. It does the job phenomenally. And I know it will find a, a buyer that can appreciate it more than I do. Now, this is just ridiculous because that's got a rock on it. It's called KHDK My Big Fat Rock. Okay. Uh, really, really funny collaboration between KHDK, the guitar player from uh, Fall Out Boy, and the comedian Brian Posehn. Super funny ad campaign. They had a thousand, they're gone. I was the only one to make a video because they kind of know my kind of humor. It's a high gain 80s rock, rock out with your out pedal. Now, Leslie looked it up on Reverb for me and um, 
these are going for over 400 bucks because it was so limited and you can't get, I'm not playing that game. Could I put it up for 400 bucks and someone would buy it? Yes, absolutely not. I think I'm asking 299 for it, which already for me feels I'm jacking up the price, but it's a hundred bucks cheaper than any other one you can get. And I don't think it's fair to do this. I'm buying limited pedals or I'm getting limited pedals that I'm then selling for a super high price. I'm not doing this game. A 299 for a very good high gain overdrive that's super limited is already, hmm, but it's a hundred bucks cheaper than any other one you'll find. Walrus Audio Iron Horse. Apparently that's, uh, as I now know, uh, rat on steroids. It's Iron Horse V3. I like it. It's good. It's got mixing up. Watch my video. If you want that, it's yours. Walrus Audio Polychrome. That's a flanger. If you want a flanger, Walrus Audio Polychrome. Looks good. Sounds good. What do you want? Now this one will hurt a bit. It's the Harmonious Monk. Collaboration between that pedal show and jam pedals. It's a phenomenal tremolo and it's a harmonic tremolo. It also has other trem uh, uh, in the normal... Um, Trem sound, but the harmonic travel on this is absolutely amazing. I do have, I do have amps with tremolo. I've got the artist sound. I've got the Tone King. Um, so if I want a real amp tremolo, I have that. <sighs> Again, great pedal, but it's kind of lost on what I do because you know what? The next trem is going to come in the house. I'm going to have to use that and show that uh, if I like it. Also, really, really cool preamp with Univibe built in. Um, Killer V from Crazy Tube Circuits, who make killer pedals. Absolutely amazing. Can be. Here. Oh, Warriors All Your Errors. I don't have a box for that, so I'll put it in a nondescript box for you. Um, five modes, realistically, two and a half different sounds among those five modes, unless you have ears that I don't have. But it's a cool high gain pedal with some twists. Top loaded, soft click. It's a good pedal. For me, high gain. I, I, personally, I'll go into my amps, which of course, most of you, don't, you don't have that many amps. And I only have them because I talk about them. What is this? Oh, the Boss RC5, the tiny brother of the RC500 and the RC10R. Little looper pedal. Uh, 99 programs and it's got uh, drums built in, but more basic than the RC10R. So uh, rather an expensive looper if you're looking for one. Thorpey Pull Stoppler, super high-end um, phaser, vibe, tremolo, stutter thing. Tough to understand, but once you understand it, it can do things that no other pedal can do. Pretty cool. Again, a very special tool that I can't say anything negative about it, but I don't... Well, what's the point in me keeping everything? KMA, KMA Tyler Deluxe. Take a signal, split it up into high end and low end, send it through two different loops. Stuff you can do with this, you can only do with this. Especially amazing for bass and that raw blood sound and all that. Um, says at the bottom, do not sell. Ignore that. Um, and here we got the Guardian of the Worm, which is the ultimate HM2 with graphic EQ, different modes, and an amazing noise gate. So if you're into the Swedish chainsaw metal sound, the Guardian of the Worm is for you, and I've got one brand new in the box. Last but not least, actually not last, second to last. Man, this is heavy. One of the most unique pedals on the market that is a shit ton of fun when you understand what it does, and the sounds it does, it only does. Only it does. That's how you say that. It's the Game Changer Audio Light Pedal. It's an optical spring reverb. It's a spring that gets checked by optical sensors at different parts of the spring. It has reverb, drive, harmonics. <laughs> it's a crazy pedal. Please watch my video, which is long and in-depth, but this is way cool. Am I going to put this on a pedal board? You know, I don't have pedal boards, really. I just build boards for videos. I don't go out because I I'm, don't go out and play live. I'm busy. I'm busy making videos. So don't see me selling this for saying I don't like this. It's absolutely killer. Most of the pedals I keep, 
are kind of reference pedals. This is like the typical rat, this is the typical king of tone, this is a typical clon. So I need one of those. I need an analog delay, I need a digital delay. Um, that's the kind of stuff I keep. I always think if I want something like this later in life, I'll buy it. Hoarding it doesn't make sense. So this is absolutely killer for one of you that wants it. So last but not least, I've worked with Joyo for years and it doesn't make sense for me to take these little pedals, the Iron Man pedals, which are pretty damn cool, pretty damn small, usually sell between 59 and 89 bucks. But doing reverb listings for these and then sending them out for, what can I ask for them? 30 bucks, 40 bucks? I'm gonna be running to the um, post office more than I want to. So what I'm doing is, in the PDF document, I will list all of these Iron Man pedals. Um, some of them have been on a display board at a trade show, just to let you know, so they have Velcro on them. I'm not gonna remove this. This is the Raptor Flanger. I will list all these pedals. And if you want one of them, you can get one for 25 bucks if, and only if, you buy one of the other things. I'm not gonna run to the post office for the 25 euro pedal. I have to do the label, I have to do a box and all that stuff. Uh, it, that doesn't make sense. So as a deal, and it's gonna say this in the PDF, if you buy anything else, anything else, guitar, amp, it doesn't matter. As long as I'm making a box for it, I will throw these in for 25 bucks each. And these are worth way more than 25 bucks. If you're looking for a cool little chorus to throw on your pedal board, bam, future chorus. If you're looking for a real, really cool, warm overdrive, the blue rain, bam, put this on your pedal board and you've got an extra little overdrive. These are good pedals. Again, where's the point in me having a big box of all these pedals sitting in the other room? Me selling them doesn't mean that they're bad. It just means through my job, which is YouTube influencer in the guitar world. And no, that's a bad word, influencer, but that's what I do. Um, I come across and acquire a lot of gear and it, it, it's pointless to keep it all. It really is. I need to eat too, which is, again, part of living. So I hope you understand this. PDS below. I want this at henningparty.com. Please refer, refrain from why aren't you donating this, blah, 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 blah. Um, I don't think I have to justify myself, but if you're following the channel, Last, you know, first Gear Street, we collected 20,000 bucks with gear and charity auctions for the animal shelter. This Gear Street, we did the Rev Melon Amp. It generated 3,200 euro for the shelter. Um, I am donating a shit ton of lower level guitars, Harley Benton's DIY projects, uh, older guitars of mine, to my friend Aaron English's project, uh, uh, which is for kids in Africa, in Kenya, making music. So right now we're putting together a huge crate um, of things. Uh, Lewitt is throwing in mics. I'm sourcing guitar boxes right now so that the, the, the guitars can be shipped uh, safely. I have uh, a, a brand new inbox uh, karaoke systems and amps from Joyu that are sitting in my mom's basement. They're all going. So I'm on it. Just, you know, don't tell someone, be charitable. You have no idea who they are and what they do. You really don't. I know it's not you, but you know, there's always some assholes that don't they, that, that think I'm some entitled trust fund boy and couldn't be further from the truth. Truth. Hey, anyway, some of those animals that we're helping at the end. <laughs>